Hey guys, new two videos on put, putting down today, uploading two. Either way, this is the second one right here. This is about Benghazi. Now, there's a lot of things I could speculate on, but um, there's some things we know, basically, at this point. And we're going to have the Senator Grams talk to some of these people now that were there in Benghazi, so we're going to find out more. But briefly, before this all starts, for anybody who any doubt, they watched my first Benghazi video about why the SEALs were using their laser designator because they thought somebody was probably shooting a missile, had a missile above them, they could shoot for them. They're getting lied to, you know? But here's the whole story. The pearls all say Benghazi is not as bad as it seems, right? We're blowing this out of proportion. It's not as bad as we're making it out to be. What if it was worse? What if this was going on? You see, if you look at the Ambassador Stevens' record as an ambassador, it seems he's been every place in the world where we've been running guns. Turns out Ambassador Stevens is pretty much American government. CIA. He's their, our gun runner, you know? And in Libya, they're getting all these missiles, these like these shoulder fire missiles that can take out the air like take out a jetliner or leave it in an airport, you know, and our cities, like a terrorist would love one of these things. And they're picking all these things up, they're getting all these weapons out of Libya that you know Gaddafi had. They're getting all this stuff, they're rounding it up, and they're taking it. And then what are they doing? Are they shipping it back to America? Are they destroying it there in Libya? I don't know. They're shipping it somewhere. To help people that they don't know, we don't know that we're helping. Well, some people do, but most of us don't. Question is, who is Stevens meeting with that night at the, at the embassy or the consulate? Which wasn't really a consulate <laughs> at all. It was like a lightly defended incognito fucking meeting place for a arms dealer to do his deals. Turns out he met the Turkish ambassador that night, right? We all heard about that. So he met earlier in the evening with the Turkish ambassador. So we're like, when you're down there scooping up, we're scooping up shoulder fired rockets, we're scooping up weapons. And Ambassador Stevens is meeting with the Turkish ambassador the same night that the raid happens on 9 /11. Okay. What country is right next to Turkey? There's a bunch of refugees pouring in from it right now because of a fucking huge war or civil war. Syria. Syria. Let's go there. And their country that we didn't bomb and they won't get involved in. Like, he applies his doctrine that he uses to say, oh, people are being oppressed over here, they're getting slaughtered. In Libya, so we go there. If it happens in Syria, we don't get involved because we know it's a mess. In the, from the, he knows it's a mess. He knows it's a quagmire. But the thing is, though, you can't, like, say, well, this is my doctrine that I apply in my foreign policy. And I'm going to apply it over here, but not over there. People can die there, but not here. You know, it's, it's okay over here, but not there. You know, it's more convenient for you to look good doing something over here than it was for you to look good and do something over here because there was a mess. And so you just pick and choose the easy fights. And you didn't get congressional approval either, Mr. Obama. He didn't get congressional approval. He went there without anybody's permission. Even more, though, after it was all over, he didn't get congressional approval from the Intelligence Committee for covert action, for the CIA being there, doing what they're doing. He was waging a little private war in Benghazi, it turns out, afterwards. Assassinating mil militant groups leaders, you know, fucking doing all this crazy stuff, drones, whatever. They, basically, he's fighting a little secret war now after the war. No approval for either one. Awesome, and totally impeachable, but you know, forget it, whatever. Liberal me, don't, they don't care, so I don't care either, right? I actually care a lot. But, either way, he didn't get involved in Syria. Back to where I was going with that first point. And now, Syria's at this point where we have. These people who are fighting Assad, the Syrian leader, who are so muddled up and mixed together that we don't we don't know who is actually the original rebels and the original rebels anymore. And who are the fundamentalists that have come and kind of co-opted this and are mixed in with them? So at this point, you know, we got the co-opted. We got people that have co-opted the original movement that we don't want to have guns because these are people that we don't want to have get Assad get chem. They're, we don't want them to get Assad's chemical weapons either because they might come back and be used to us. I mean, or Israel. So I mean. The deal is, is that this is all no good. You got the people that we don't want to have what we don't want to have weapons. We're funneling weapons to them now through Turkey that were taken from Syria, and, and it, we're and we're picking these weapons up in the process of a covert war that nobody has any approval to actually do. The guy running this is a guy who's been the the, the arms guy. For the CIA or the state or the government, or the U.S. government for a long time. Master Stevens, not really quite. He's an ambassador, but he's never really quite been an ambassador. He's an ambassador, not an ambassador.
passenger. <laughs> Either way, that's how bad Benghazi is. But what makes it worse is, like I said in the, the other video, I talk about the seals. Those men sat on a rooftop in Libya and died. One of them pointed his laser designator at a target because he thinks there's a plane in the sky with a bomb or a missile on it that's going to hit that laser, take that mortar team he's laying down, or a drone even, maybe. And all this nonsense, but we didn't have any assets that could have got there to even do that. It's BS. Because in Sigonella Air Force Base, it's a U.S. base in this tip of Italy, there's two squadrons of F-16s sitting there, and they got full armament hangers there, full armament bombs. They have full munitions, like the plethora they choose from whatever munitions they want, they can strap on these suckers, and they can be there. And they have been there in like 30, 45 minutes. Like, I think it was about 40, 40 minutes on at mock speed, you know? They could have been there. And, you know, maybe they couldn't have saved them. They could, probably couldn't have saved Ambassador Stevens and their guy's name. My apologies to his family. I can't remember his name. Ambassador Stevens, like, well, or whatever is the other State Department employee. They, they die right away in the first attack on the, con on the consulate. But the two SEALs, Doherty and Woods, they died later on, seven hours later at the annex. There could have been planes overhead. They got there four or five minutes. They could have put the two up above and kept them there and, you know, rotated them out. Like they did the drone. Third question, this drone, the first one that was originally on scene doing surveillance, is running low on fuel. They, issued, they, said, they, they said, set another one out there. You know, and it gets there. Other one leaves now, so you got continuous footage overhead. Why did they arm the second drone? Why didn't they not hang any missiles on that sucker? They're missile capable, so why didn't they do it? Maybe they did. Maybe they didn't even, have, they didn't even fire one though. No, it doesn't mean die. Maybe they didn't because they didn't care. Think about that. Maybe they didn't fire the missile on the drone because they, 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 didn't, they, didn't, they didn't want to make, make this any bigger than it was. They didn't want anybody, they, they went for whatever reason. They had a missile on it and they didn't fire it. So they didn't, they, they fuck those guys. Or they had no missiles on it because they had no intention of firing them in the first place anyway. And they knew that. So We had people in the area that could have been there. We had the Marine Corps teams a lot closer than anybody's saying. There's spookies in that area. Don't get me wrong. There's spookies nearby. There's c there's nearby in that area. I'll tell you that as a fact. I can tell you why I know it's a fact. But it's a fact. People I know that know things because they work in the military. And they're in that area in the neck of the woods with African command. Or other places in there where they have access to that kind of stuff, that information. We have troop. We had troops in the area. We had spooky in the area. We had F-16s for less than 45 minutes away. We had a drone that we sent unarmed. We had guys lasing the target because they, somebody told them there's a missile coming, guys. Just keep the laser on the target. Instead of shooting the guys in front of them, they're trying to kill them. And we were trying to go out and take that more team out because they're CIA guys. They're pretty, pretty gnarly dudes. Navy SEALs, both of them. Instead of doing that, so then they died. Our federal government let that happen. That's a fact. I went to bed that night, went upstairs to read about 5 o'clock in the evening, knowing what was going on at the consulate. And seven hours later, after shit's hit the fan, he's probably asleep. And men are dying in a third world country somewhere. They're dying in a war that nobody gave him permission to wage, in a covert action that nobody gave him permission to continue into. He's funneling weapons to Turkey, and then into Syria, into the hands of people that we don't know were the, which are the good, good and the bad guys. That's what happened.